Observe from 17 once again. This is my Metal Gear Solid 3 European Extreme video walkthrough. This is the first section of the game called the Virtuos Mission. It's pretty short and in this I'm going to outline exactly what this video and this guide in general is going to do. So this is going to be a no alarm, no kill run through of this game on European Extreme. I don't think there's an achievement on Snake Eater for not getting any alarms, but I'm doing it just to make it a little bit more, you know, challenging for myself and to make it a little bit more interesting to watch. The no kill parameter will give you an achievement or a trophy, but you can do that on any difficulty if you're wanting to just go for it. So this mission is is more of a like a leisure than anything else. It's not really needed the the walkthrough that I'm making, but I want to do it because I said I would back when the high definition collection came out. Uh, this is a mistake, by the way, guys. I tried to go past this uh, crocodile, and that happens. So, there is a way to, to roll through uh, that crocodile. I just did it wrong. So, don't imitate that if you're wanting to, to have a high life bar. But, you know, there's going to be mistakes in this guide, and that's one of the things that make it more enjoyable to watch. Because it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be one of those amazing foxhound, you know, an hour and 20 minute speedruns that I've, I've seen so many of so recently. Like, this is going to be as honest as I can make it, and as useful as I can make it to the average gamer. But this first room here, if you shoot this guy in the face, it'll drop him immediately. Uh, you'll notice I'm doing the reload cancels by unequipping and re-equipping my gun, and here's a nice little trick to immediately knock out a guy. So shoot him, and then roll through him. If you remember on Metal Gear Solid 2, you could just roll and knock them out, but on this game, it does not work. Unless you shoot them first, they will get back up, and it's an immediate failure. Um, and the reason for this is on European Extreme, there is no choice on to not get alerted on sight and to fail. On previous versions, i.e. Metal Gear Solid 2, you could turn that option on or off. And on this game, if you get spotted, the game immediately ends. So... Where it's really good when it comes to reloading checkpoints if you mess up, it's kind of awkward if you're going for things like a Foxhound rank and, and things like that, because this game is absolutely horrendous when it comes to reloading your game. It takes so fucking long to do it. There's no quick reload. You've got to quit to the menu. You've got to pick your save. You've got to get back in. So anybody who does the Foxhound runs, I have massive respect for the, the amount of skill and patience that they've put into the game. It's pretty damn amazing. But the sequence there, you'll notice I changed my aim because for some reason it didn't invert my view and it was messing me up. And the easiest way to do this room is if you shoot that beehive, this guard will then scare all the rest of the guards out of this area and you have free reign to just run completely through it. So it's, it's nice and quick like that. But I'd played so much of Metal Gear Solid 2 when the High Definition Collection came out that I just wasn't really in the mood for covering this game, especially when there wasn't as big of an incentive. And I don't know why there's no achievement or, or trophy for beating them on European Extreme, because... Well, I do, actually. I, I'm just lying to you there. There's no achievement for it, because it's a difficulty that is beyond a lot of people's skill level, beyond a lot of people's willingness to play. And it's because it's incredibly punishing. And is that not the entire definition of an achievement? So to me, it just seems bizarre. It seems like a a double standard to the, the achievements themselves, but for some reason, that's just not how these games work. So, right here, you're going to see me do this a lot. I press back to go into my menu instead of start, and it cocks me up quite a lot. And what I'm looking for at this moment is I'm looking for a grenade, but I don't have any. And there's a guard to my right, so I'm kind of curious if he'll hear me. So you'll notice I walk immediately so that he doesn't hear me. And then I move because I know if I can get to this door, I can trigger the cutscene and I can end this part of the level. So uh, after a couple more cinematics, it's going to ask you and introduce you to the healing system, which we're going to be doing quite a lot of in the game. And it just involves using the specific item on the specific body part. And it's pretty realistic. Occasionally it's kind of annoying because you think you should have applied enough to stop whatever wound it is and it wants you to apply something like a styptic and things like that. And you can also use things that don't even heal you, so be careful here if you just bash the buttons because you might get low on resources, which you know could potentially be quite dangerous. But I'm, I've currently just recorded up to the end, if you're wondering where I am in progress on the guide. And he trolled me for about 40 minutes before I got a run that I wasn't 
you know, that had enough of the technique I wanted to show you, but not enough to really be completely amazing. So I'm going to explain that when that comes. But hopefully this is something that, you know, wets the whistle of people interested in Metal Gear, and it'll give me something quite fun to upload in between the wait now, between uh, Versus 13, or Lightning Returns, or whatever the hell the thing's called, and Dark Souls 2. So thank you for watching, and you take care now.